The Great Controversy, Chapter 32, The Snares of Satan The scriptures declare that upon one occasion when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan came also among them, not to bow before the eternal king, but to further his own malicious designs against the righteous. With the same object he is in attendance when men assemble for the worship of God. Though bidden from sight, he is working with all diligence to control the minds of the worshippers. Like a skillful general, he lays his plans beforehand. As he sees the messenger of God searching the scriptures, he takes note of the subject to be presented to the people. Then he employs all his cunning and shrewdness to so control circumstances that the message may not reach those whom he is deceiving on that very point. The one who most needs the warning will be urged into some business transaction which requires his presence, or will be by some other means be prevented from hearing the words that might prove to him a savior of life unto life. Again Satan sees the Lord's servants burdened because of the spiritual darkness that enshrouds the people. He bears their earnest prayers for divine grace and power to break the spell of indifference carelessness, and indolence. Then with renewed zeal he plies his arts. He tempts men to the indulgence of appetite or to some other form of self-gratification, and thus benumbs their sensibilities so that they fail to hear the very things which they need most to learn. Satan well knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prayer and the searching of the scriptures will be overcome by his attacks. Therefore, he invents every possible device to engross the mind. There has ever been a class professing godliness who, instead of following on to know the truth, make it the religion to seek some fault or character or error of faith in those with whom they do not agree. Such are Satan's right-hand helpers. Accusers of the brethren are not few, and they are always active when God is at work and his servants are rendering him true homage. They will put a false coloring upon the words and acts of those who love and obey the truth. They will represent the most earnest, zealous, self-denying servants of Christ as deceived or deceivers. It is their work to misrepresent the motives of every true and noble deed, to circulate insinuations, and arouse suspicion in the minds of the inexperienced. In every conceivable manner, they will seek to cause that which is pure and righteous to be regarded as foul and deceptive. And in this work, the agents of Satan have their master and his angels to help them. But none need to be deceived concerning them. It may be readily seen whose children they are, whom example they follow, and whose work they do. Ye shall know them by their fruits. They closely resemble Satan, the envenomed slanderer, the accuser of the brethren. It is Satan's plan to bring into the church insincere, 
unregenerate elements that will encourage doubt and unbelief, and hinder all who desire to see the work of God advance, and to advance with it. Many who have no real faith in God or in His Word assent to some principles of truth and pass as Christians, and thus they are enabled to introduce their errors as scriptural doctrines. Satan is well aware that the weakest soul who abides in Christ is more than a match for the host of darkness, and that should he reveal himself openly, he would be met and resisted. Therefore, he seeks to draw away the soldiers of the cross from their strong fortification, while he lies to ambush with his forces, ready to destroy all who venture upon his ground. No man is safe for a day or an hour without prayer, especially should we entreat the Lord for wisdom to understand his word. Satan is an expert in quoting scripture, placing his own interpretation upon passages he which he hopes to cause us to stumble. We should study the Bible with humility of heart, never losing sight of our dependence upon God. While we must constantly guard against the devices of Satan, we should pray in faith continually, lead us not into temptation. This ends the portion reading. In the portion, in the chapter, Sneers of Satan, taken from the Great Controversy. May God help us and keep us, and let us focus on Christ in His Word, and pray without ceasing. Maranatha, God bless. right with God, His pardon is free. Get right with God, He's waiting for thee. Our Jesus is calling, oh come unto me. Take Him, O sin.